Antonio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania writes and he says, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's okay. I don't exactly understand the crossover slopes like 6, 12, 24 dB and the frequencies that they uh, cover. I I'm not a mathematician by any means, so if you could explain this in terms I could understand, I would very much appreciate it. Sure. Uh, first, a little comment about, about us engineers. We, <laughs> we love our acronyms. We, we love talking in our own language because it's, well, like, any, like anything, it, you know, there's, there's a language that goes with it and it just, uh, it just leaves people in the dark. I, I'll give you a good example. We, uh, this, this building, uh, PS Audio, uh, we own the building. Terry and I are, like, I think we own 55% of the building. And then a couple of good friends who are, are high-end real estate guys own, you know, they put together a little group to buy the building. And it's, you know, uh, and, and my son Lon, my oldest son Lon owns part of it. And so we, we, we put together a group to buy the building because it's expensive. It's, it's like five or six million dollars, right? I don't have that kind of money. And, of course, the bank actually owns it. But anyway, that said, we, we were sitting in a conference room talking about the expenses with the building and what we're going to do and all this stuff. And they started, you know, we were talking about, well, let's maybe let's think about refi. We'll, we'll refi the building and, and, and cover some of these expenses, right? Oh my God, I'm starting to talk. I mean, I don't know what these guys are talking about at all. Um, LTVs, these, these acronyms are running past me like a July rabbit. <laughs> like, what the hell's an LTV? Oh, loan to value. Oh, okay. And then, I mean, and, the, and these uh, uh, cap rates and LTV, I, it just, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I, I could understand how when we sit around and talk about, you know, the, the transconductance of the, uh, of, of the FET and whether it's a, a, a JFET or a, a MOSFET or, you know, it's a, uh, you know, on and on and on, right? So when I'm sitting with engineers, I'm very comfortable just yapping away with all these acronyms. But I understand how it feels to be in a meeting with a bunch of accountants or a bunch of real estate guys. We all have our, our stuff. Okay, enough of a ramble. Uh, so, <laughs> um, crossover frequencies have a couple of components that you should know about. And we call these Let's just talk about the slope, which is what you originally asked for, 6, 12, uh, 18, 24. So those are called um, the slopes So and the order of which. So a first order, second order, third order, fourth order filter. And what that's referring, <coughs> excuse me, what that's referring to is the steepness of, like a slope, like a hill, right? That's why they call it a slope. It looks like this when you, when you draw it out on a graph. So what does it mean? If we were building, let's say, a low-pass filter, okay? A low-pass filter says that everything above a certain frequency is going to start to go away. And everything below a certain frequency, that same frequency, is going to be maintained intact, right? So a low-pass filter lets everything low through and cuts off things that are high, right? And let's say that we picked a thousand cycles. Just, just make it a thousand cycles. So, at that thousand cycles, as we were sweeping a sine wave generator or we're playing into a microphone, everything below a thousand cycles is going to go through with no trouble. Everything above a thousand cycles is going to start to go away at a certain rate. Okay, and that rate is this slope. So a first order filter is 6 dB per octave. So what does that mean? We'll skip the 3 dB down point and all that because that's not important at this point. Let's just for general purposes say at 1,000 cycles, we're flat, which we, anyway, doesn't matter. At 2,000 cycles, one octave, an octave is a doubling of the frequency. At 2,000 cycles, we're going to be 6 dB down or half volted, uh, half volume. At the next octave of 2K is 4K. 
were going to be another 6 dB down, which would be a total of 12 dB down. And for every octave, we're going to be down, lowering in volume to the, uh, 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 to the signal. And so at however many octaves away, you'll be down 30 dB, 40 dB, and you won't be able to hear almost anything. If we want to do that quicker, because we don't want to hear any 2K, or we don't want to hear any 4K or 8K, right? We might engage a steeper filter, a 12 dB per octave, an 18 dB, a 24 dB per octave, 48. I mean, you, ch you choose what you want in terms of slope. How quickly do you want to get out of it? Because all of them have baggage that goes with it that we're not going to discuss right now. So a 24 dB per octave filter means that we're flat at 1,000 cycles. At 2,000 cycles, we're already 24 dB down. Like, whoa! It's like a cliff. Ain't, ain't nothing there. And at 4 kilohertz, another octave, we're going to be 48 dB down. See how that works? So if you're 12 dB down, the next one's going to be 24 dB down, and the next one's going to be 36 dB down. So that's what all that means, and that's that slope and that order of filter that we're talking about. Okay, I hope that, I hope that helped you understand that. It, it's, it can be very confusing. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye.